Hello, welcome back. So this is uh, another little game I made. It took me probably about probably about 16 hours to code this game. Um, it's uh, I'll go ahead and run the game, and you can see uh, see what it does. So you're just just a little kind of a space fighter game. Normally, you'd only have you'd start out with one uh, missile, um, but I've kind of adjusted the variables so that all all win. It would be substantially harder if you only had one. Um, and but normally you'd start out with one, and then you like this is a little power up. So you get that power up, and then you go to two, and then and then the three missiles like like it is here. And uh, if you take damage, um, you'll lose a missile. So there's obviously a number of projectiles that are shot at you, and um, you can uh, you know shoot back and stuff. So it's pretty pretty basic concept. You know this game's been done a number of times before. Um, so I'll see if I can get this to explode, and then we'll go uh, look at the code. So. All right, so that's the game. So let's take a look at the code. Um, now, when I originally, now one thing of importance to note about this game is there's a lot of things happening on the screen at the same time. All the bullets and missiles and explosions all all have to um, be done with you know four loops, right? Uh, so so like the missile moving, you know, you'd think you'd have a four loop that would slowly adjust the you know x coordinate of say the the missile that you shot. So you'd have a missile at you know x coordinate ten, and then it'd run through the loop and it'd go to 20, 30, 40, whatever. Um, but the problem with that is if you if if you did that did it that way to where a for loop um, moved the missile, then you'd go into the for loop and it would move that missile and the whole game would stop until that missile reached its destination and then the next missile and then the next ship would try and move and it wouldn't be in sync. So the having a for loop uh, would not work. In, in that, I mean, obviously you still have to use four loops, but it's not going to work like to move anything because things all have to move at the same time. So you have to use a timer, and this is my this is my game timer here. Now, how you move stuff is you put it on the timer, and the timer basically, you know, goes every I think it's like I'm have it like at uh, 0.5. Uh, milliseconds or something that it runs so and then it'll run through here and you know timer mod 4 if timer mod 4 equals 1 it'll run these functions if timer mod 3 equal, timer mod 4 equals 3 it'll run these functions right so um, and all, all this is uh, if a lot of if statements on the timer so that each time each time the timer goes by everything happens on the screen all the bullets move all the ships move you know um, and uh, same with your player ships. So um, if, you know, move up equals true, so that's your code to move up, uh, then it'll, uh, you know, this is just so you don't move up the screen. But if that's true, the timer is going to move your ship up for you. Now, all these functions... Um, what are all these doing? Check player ship with fighter collision. Check player missile uh, collision with fighter. So these are all collisions um, that could happen in the game, right? So is your ship missile going to hit the Star Destroyer, right? Or is your ship missile going to hit, like, the, you know, the Death Star or whatever, you know? Um, so that's what all these, all these do. So I'll open those up in a second. Um, and we can look at those, but then also you have your drawing functions. Um, so the building just happens uh, right at the start. So, oh, let me talk about that first. So I originally started building this game using a um, an array right here for the fighters. So the fighters are the real little ships, um, you know, and there might be like 20 of them in the game at any one point. Um, 
Actually, no, there's nine. Three times three. So, X number of fighters and Y number of fighters fight. Yeah, I originally used a um, two-dimensional array, but that was not the way to go. I should have used this. And I started using lists. I realized what I had done wrong, so I started using lists. And the rest of the code got, got much easier. I was able to, you know, just uh, delete ships when they died instead of trying to just move them out of the picture and then move them back into the picture when I needed a new ship again. Uh, so I just deleted them when they died and then made a new one when I needed it. Um, so lists were, they are more resource um, heavy, but they are definitely the way to go for this game as far as uh, simplicity. So let's look at my, before I go on, I, I probably should have talked about this first, but my classes. Um, I have a ships class, uh, missiles class, explosions, and power-ups. They're all very much the same. I mean, they all have um, a graphical location, X graphical location, and a, and a Y graphical location. So you know where they are, and that's, you know, you change that is how you move the objects on the screen. Um, ships have shields. That's how you, you know, cause them to explode and stuff. Um, missiles, nothing too, oh, um, distance traveled. So, you know, a missile doesn't stay in the game forever. That's basically the number of iterations that a missile will, la will last for. So a missile might last for, you know, 30 iterations or something, which means, you know, if it, if it moves across the screen, you know, it's one, two, three, four, and then when it gets to 30, you you remove it from the game. So, and then explosions as well is a class. It has a location and has um, a size, basically. So your X, Y location and then your your size. And then the count is for how long it will explode. You could, you could make an explosion last for a minute if you wanted it in the game, just if you adjust the count. Um, and then power up, same thing. I'm going to open that one up. Um, the X, Y location, and then something happens when it collides with your ship. Okay, so um, all, all, all it is, this is just a panel, of course, and then a start button. So those are the only two, you know, units you need. What is that? There we go. Okay. So let's look at these. Um, oh, let's just, this is how they, uh, This is, I was going to show you how they move. So um, right here, move fighter. So uh, let's actually go with one that I didn't did a list. Start destroyer. There we go. Okay, so um, just your normal for loop. But this for loop isn't actually moving the Star Destroyer. The for loop is looping through each Star Destroyer. So there might be four Star Destroyers. It's looping through each Star Destroyer. It's not picking one and then moving it. It's going to one Star Destroyer, moving that one. And then it goes to the other Star Destroyer, and it moves that one. And then the other one, and it moves that one. It's not picking one and, and moving it its whole location. That's what I'm trying to get, get at, is you can't take a loop and have that loop move one ship 30 times because then your game won't be um, in sync. You'll have one ship moving and then a missile will move and then, but you want it all to happen at the same time. So that's what we did here. So the four loops don't loop through ship movements. They loop through ships um, and like li a list of ships. So in this case, it's a list of Star Destroyers. And each time it goes through the uh, each time it goes through the for loop, first thing it does is it draws this Star Destroyer blank, which is just a picture of um, the Star Destroyer with no background. Um, you know, you have to remove the background in an editing tool. And then um, it's just black, same as the background. So if, if you were to like pause the code here, you, you, this ship would disappear because it just get drawn over. And then after that happens, it's going to move it. So star destroyer x graphical location equals star destroyer x graphical location minus five. And that, that, that's really it. And then it's going to draw it again down here, right? 
so, um, so it, it draws this blank, which is just a black picture that draws over it. It moves the Star Destroyer, and then it draws the Star Destroyer again. All this is, is if, um, if it reaches 150, it uh, resets it. That's all this if statement is. So if it basically gets out of the picture, it resets it. But, you know, you don't worry about the if statement. main thing is you're just drawing over the Star Destroyer, you're then moving its location, and then redrawing the Star Destroyer. So I think there's a faster way to do, to, or to do it, that, something that uses less resources than, than draw damage, but I, I, didn't, I didn't look into it, it's, you know. Um, and then, and then after it moves each ship, just five pixels, which isn't much, it exits the for loop and it goes back to the timer. So, um, let's look here, move star destroyer. Let's go find that on the timer. So we're in game timer right here. We're in game timer and then move star destroyer is right there. It happens one out of every four, um, rotation every every time four one out of every four timer clicks i guess you could say so um and then it's going to draw player ship and once again player ship is just going to move just a little bit and uh draw a fighter and your fighter the fighter ships are just going to move a little bit so okay now the only thing else i think Oh, and uh, once again, I put the code up on GitHub, on my GitHub account, which there will be a little link in the low bar for you if you're interested in checking it out. Um, let's look at one of these. Clear missile. Let's do this one. So, check player missile with Star Destroyer. So, S stands for Star Destroyer, M stands for Missile, so for your loop. So, <clears throat> each one of these goes into this loop. This is just, are they at the same, on the screen, at the same place at the same time? That's all the uh, if statement um, is for. And if you're wondering why I let my code run off, like, like off to the off the edge here, it's because when I code, I'm on a screen that's like twice the size. So um, I I bring it off that screen to record because it doesn't have as good resolution. <clears throat> but all this if statement does is just check if the missile is at the same place as the Death Star at the same time, and then it just goes in here. Okay, if it is, you know, if it is at the same place at the same time, then it's going to add a new explosion, explosion.add. Now, um, Death Star and it adds it at the X and at the Y graphical location with just a slight adjustment, right? And then this here is the size. So if you go, if we go, if we were to go into explosions, which I'll do in a second, you'll see that there's, there's a size. And then also this is just how many um, iterations it's going to do of the explosion. So it'll flash for if it's at negative five, you know, that's going to end up being, um, well, 15 flashes basically. Because at 10, they get they get deleted. But uh, <clears throat> all you're doing is you're adding a new explosion. And that explosion has a location, an explosion has a size, and a length. So that's length as in how long, time length. Um, and then here, player missile dot remove. So you're removing the missile from the list of missiles uh, with that with that one. That's why the missile doesn't go past the ship. It hits the ship and explodes. And then right here, you're adjusting the shields according to um, cannon count. That's how many missiles you're shooting at the ship. You can have anywhere from one to three, and then touch this times ten. And then if Death Star Shield is less than one, so this is is the ship dead, right? Is death is the death did the Death Star die? Well, if it did, then you need to add another explosion, and that's what this is, and then kill the Death Star. Just remove it from your list. 
So hopefully that helped. Hopefully that's interesting. Hopefully that made somewhat sense. I mean, it's a pretty big game. It's hard for me to really, you know, go over too much in detail with, you know, we're talking, you know, 600 lines of code. So it's hard to hard to go over a lot of it. But just remember, use lists if you want to make a game like this. Use lists, uh, not arrays, because um, it's nice to be able to change, basically change the length. Um, and you can change the length of a list, but you can't really change the length of an array. Um, all right. Well, thank you very much. Have a good day.